And here we go. A uh, little bit late <laughs> in the hour tonight. I thought it was an hour different than it is. This is Flash Somebody at 20% off because <laughs> I prove it. I'm 20% off every time I touch this uh, computer. Anyway, what? what? Might as well just... Oh, <laughs> I don't care. I already started. You could have just so said that, sir. Anyway. Where what are we gonna do here? We always say thanks to Old Grim for his bailing us out of all this techie stuff. And now they got the time zones all confused. I'll write down the time I started so I don't go too far either direction. Now mark it at seven forty five came on instead of seven. <laughs> I thought it was eight it's supposed to come on tonight. Anyway, thanks Grim for all that, and uh, he puts it uh, puts the uh, programs out. I say us, and now I'm solo again. But Vinny will return and make life more interesting. I promise. <laughs> anyway, we say hi to the bots and the bodies in the RealLibertyMedia.com chat, where all these wonderful things originate because we have brains. We're smart. And we're going to say Barman, Cowboy, Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Antiasmo, Betsy, Chalcedony, I be Don C. Meisterbrow, Rain, Rob Works, Romes. It's kind of poetic. Vanna White, Weather, Dork, Phantom. And well then, Beetle, Circle, hey honey. Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle Dakota, me, and hold on, let me scroll a little, I'm going to run out of names, Frumpy, Frumpy 3, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jay's Nines, Jay's Kozu, Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Tech Man, and Uno, and those are the uh, mental midgets and giants of the electronic and human world to entertain you <laughs> and i try to be original it's not easy oh was i all okay i've i'm so messed up with all this time changing time traveling who's what yeah this was the one i wanted to do alone but i wanted to do it to do it at midnight unfortunately the mind and body don't they don't stay up <laughs> all hours of the night, one night, and a different hour the next night. I'm I'm too old for all that craziness now. <laughs> but it was fun trying. So, tonight, I'll tell you, I've been on this rampage lately about fluoride. And the reason I want to rant on that is because it's, it's it's one of the foundations that we all grew up with as a, just a big fucking lie. Oh, ooh, I said the F word. I'm bad. They're going to spank me. Anyway, I try not to do that, but some things just, well, they require an F word here and there just to make a point, if you know what I mean. And anyway, so I found a couple of links, and one link that I found was a government link. Now, the very first time I Googled it and just typed in fluoride, I get one result. But when I uh, get all, uh, what do you call it, internet-y, you know, webby, I'm going to do it the right way and get my proper information. So I went to the, uh, what was it I went to? I went to whatever, and I ended up in livescience.com. Hold on, sweat one second here. Well, anyway, I found, I'm looking through this here, and it uh, says facts about fluoridation. And this is new information. It doesn't go back all that far. I guess I could post the link on the main feed, but there's a, in 2015, reference to this. Now, we've all been... Uh, exposed to the truth about what form 
of fluoride is added to the drinking water because what they're doing is they're describing a natural compound but what they're actually putting in it is very different <laughs> just like with the uh, cannabis and hemp oh hemp is a cousin of that horrible shitty cannabis plant and if you use it well you're gonna burn in hell and be and <laughs> we've been living like a bunch of cavemen for long enough as far as I'm concerned but this link is an example that thing I just posted I'm not Hansel so I'm not posting this so that you'll go whoa you're so smart I want fluoride in my water uh, I'm posting it because the truth gets exposed at such a small level that hardly anybody knows what the truth is so they go with what they're told I think it's just a lot easier to just yep the world's round we're spinning on a ball through space yep that's doing this and this is doing that and never question any of it and whatever if you don't want to question and just believe the crap you hear well that's fine good luck with Donald Trump in 2019 <laughs> Because that, you know, it's got nothing. Well, I was being sarcastic, but Trump ain't got nothing to do with any of this. I don't know what, who to actually blame. You know, if you're going to blame the people throughout my life, the way I've seen this adult thing, is the system tells you something, but they're lying to you about something. And usually... Something is everything. <laughs> I don't know why other people, I see them chat on the RLM, saw it today. Optimistic and hopeful that, you know, if, if the leadership was to do the right thing, blah, blah, blah. Well, wait a minute. See, we already know the leadership's not doing the right thing. And nobody does fucking anything about that. <laughs> they just c complain on the internet and... Twitter, what's it, Facebook, because the president does it, by God, have your voice heard, be recognized, be one of 12 million voices that nobody gives a shit about, <laughs> but they don't tell you that, <laughs> they just do whatever they please, hey, be quiet, animal, At, hey, I'm a, My dog is having a meltdown tonight. Hold on. Hey, it, you, you're making me yell. Cut it out, you bonehead. There's nobody's going to hurt you. <laughs> She's protecting me from the voices on the street walking by the house. Now, that's the price you pay for having a pet that you don't particularly care to train. I could have been fussy about it and, you know, when she was a real baby and gone to the dog trainer and if you do it with them what happens is the dog acclimates to you telling them what to do and you're learning from a person that knows how to do it right so you do it right the dog always listens to you well i kind of have more fun with hannah being a mutt that doesn't do what she's told <laughs> you know but on the bright side you can't get on the property without the dog or the cat telling me about it. So, no reason to lock doors or worry about invaders from other planets. Now, the wife likes to lock the door. She's a door locker from the city. <laughs> well, trust me, if they're going to get in, they're going to get in. No lock ain't going to change that. Recognize this quote, Flash somebody, says Grimnir. Who's to blame? Well, certainly, there are those more responsible than others, and they will be accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. That's what I think, and I can't do anything alone about the problem. <laughs> See, it's a, it's a catch-22 if, if you talk about these things with other people. 
their indoctrination and their learning makes them look at you like you've just grown a freaking dick out of your forehead because it's so off the wall to be different than the mainstream. And we all know what the mainstream is. I don't think it, it changes much from country to country. It's all based around the main three things. Finance, church, and what else? Education. You know, government, church, education. Those three things dominate everybody in some way or another. One of them out of the three. Sometimes all three out of the three. And I call that a colostomy bag, boss. Let me tell you. Can you imagine being chained to three different concepts like that and then trying to put them all together to make them work? <laughs> it's never going to happen. It's like this diversity shit. What a bunch of nonsense. <coughs> if Cirque ever goes all diversity on me, I'm, I'm going to just lose my mind. I mean, crap. She's a Dane, and I'm a <laughs> something. <laughs> don't know what. I don't think America cares what I am anymore. So, hmm. Haven't been there in so long, claiming it's kind of ridiculous. But, then again, I don't want to claim this. I'm a guest in a foreign land, and playing with a little Danish woman, making sandwiches and shit, having a good time. But, guess I could be on the front line. Of some Venezuelan war coming up right now. <laughs> I'd have to be a lot younger, though. I never did get that. Uh, I had the military thing just, eh, we're not going to take you. Uh, little Miss. Oh, my goodness. I get a lick sore, and she changes her program, so I thought it was missing something. <laughs> I called you Little Missy. <laughs> That's right, Little Missy. <laughs> if you can't tease your wife, who can you tease? Huh? You can go tease the banker. Yeah. Hey, this is the stick up. Just kidding. <laughs> go in there with a bag full of dirty clothes and ask him where the laundry room is. <laughs> I want to wash these. I heard you guys launder stuff here. <laughs> Bet it wouldn't go over too good. Anyway. So what's going on in the real liberty media dot com? I'm boy, I'm tempted to read some of this stuff here. Let me see if there's anything interesting to read. Because, you know, we get told uh, it says here in print, water fluoridation is the addition of the chemical fluoride to public water supplies for the purpose of reducing cavities. Now that's been debunked disproven, proven to be nonsense, a lot of things. Let me see if there's anything in the RLM. Anybody got a comment? Because we're off on the time. So I, I'm usually yakking about something else. We, and then by that time, you know, they hear what I said and they print to it if they got something to say. It's a fun little game we play over here on the reallibertymedia.com chat. <clears throat> oh, let me take a minute here. We're going to, uh, what do you call that, promote. I'm looking for words tonight with my out-of-sort little mind on 20% off. And we come up with promoting realliberty.org and Freedoms Network. Those are uh, two projects Grimm's got going on. And then life is life, man. Take a few minutes off of Facebook and... Look up on one of those two projects and see what you can find on it. Because the formats are all the same. You can't really do much with this internet. It's simple. It's got to be made simple so us dummies like me can find our way around easily and not have to spend 20 minutes reading instructions. And like, I Well, I'll probably end up having to do it anyway. I'm not the greatest with the computer, but once I learn it, I think it's all right. You know, I, I get familiar with something. The only thing I've really had any trouble with catching on to so far as the, all that radio changing stuff at the end on the Linux. Don't know why, but it just couldn't get a, a logic to it. It seems so happenstance almost. But I'm sure there's a pattern. I just couldn't see it. 
But I'm sure Grimm did. And that's why I always thank Grimm at the beginning of these crazy podcasts because, you know, he puts us out there to it. Real, from reallibertymedia.com, we go out to Spreaker, BitChute, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, the usual suspects, Twitter and uh, Facebook, I think. I don't know. We might not be on Facebook. We might be too nasty for Facebook. They go, hey, these people talk about marijuana. <laughs> and I don't even call it marijuana. It is not marijuana. That was the criminal name they gave it. Like the criminal names they gave all of us when they took us away from our folks. The state said, we're your mommy and daddy now, bitch. What you going to do? And that came clear to me at 12 because I, I took off away from the adults and went to away to be away from them. And as a punishment, they brought me back. <laughs> but the weirdest part about the whole thing was I was obviously trying to escape something, but nobody ever asked me one time, why do you keep doing this? If any adult had ever asked me, I would have told him. But I wasn't going to bring it up. I was the kid, so I thought, the less you tell them, the less crap they can do to you. So be quiet. And, well, might have been wrong about that one. <laughs> Who's to know? But, I'm see, I'm looking at it in a positive light, though, sir. Because, even though it was a rotten way to grow up and all that, I made the best of it. I had a hell of a time living my, living my life as an individual instead of uh, being a member of a union or a, a party or a state. I like to move around and spend a little time here. And sp- there were a few periods where I slowed down, but even within those periods, there was times where I'd leave for a few months at a time. So, until... The trip to Scotland, I was pretty mobile. <laughs> and then the trip to Scotland slowed me down. And now, geez, I'm a homebody, people. Wow, 59 years old, and my favorite place to be is home. <laughs> I like home better than I like the bar, and I like the bar. I could find fucking excuses up the wazoo. Sir, I'm going to go to the bar. But I think, you know, that's kind of not... Uh, I didn't get married to do that. And I'd have to go by myself because of the pet. You know, we have this crazy dog that needs somebody to make sure she doesn't destroy everything. So anyway, no, I guess I'm going to do something on floor. And I would have said, Sana, Hannah, and uh, my little house moment for some reason. But the, yeah, these things that they write and they print these things for everybody to see. It says here in a box, fluoride has been added to U.S. public drinking supplies since the 1940s. And to continue the the, the story, it says about two thirds of the U.S. population has fluoridated public water. Now I read in this other thing, 40 percent. Now, this is claiming 65%, give or take. Uh, Okay, but it says, according to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. (laughs) Oh, geez. Uh, Of those served by community water systems, the percentage climbs to (laughs) 74.6%. So who's lying? I mean, are they putting it in 75% of the water or are they putting it in 40% of the water because I saw both both entries from two different places of input you know I ask a question or I write a word and boom and then you get something okay now what I'm using to gauge what I read is not my education it's my lack of education that gets me through this because um, I think I just look at the results of something and figure out what would it take to fuck it up that bad 
<laughs> it's usually easy to figure out. And it always boils to the same thing. You poor guys got to be bored as fuck of this. If we didn't tell each other a bunch of bullshit and lies and stories and make believe and we paid attention to the things that really matter and discarded all this other crap that's consuming us constantly through the internet or advertising or whatever you see in your day that draws your attention into this freaking void thing. It works us all. <laughs> it works me. I just don't get as worked as some other people do, I think. You know, like the difference between you anarchist scum, you should be like me. I go to the good Catholic church. My children are, well, oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, but things like that, you know, things haven't changed. Things have been exposed. We know, we all know we're living in a bunch of shit. There can't be anybody, well, unfortunately, I think there is somebody, but I always end up in getting stuck talking about him because he's he's the sore though. <laughs> you know, he's, he's that suppository that you just, you don't ever want to need it. But if you ever need it, Boy, you'll be glad there was one somewhere around. One of those kind of stories. I could have said tampon, but that wouldn't have been practical. So, I went with what was real. <laughs> Living in fantasy land. And I'm accused of that a lot, because I like to enjoy the cannabis. Oh, I like to enjoy the cannabis in the morning. Sometimes. <laughs> You know that joke. Ah, I got everybody. Anyway, hey, Cowboy Tech popped up. Looks like half hour before a cloud with tornado passes over Columbus. Maybe an hour. Ooh, weather. we're getting weather reports from one state to another on the internet. And I'm reading it in Denmark. Can you imagine? See, that's just, that's an example of how far apart the population is on a inter on an uh, information level because there's tons and tons of people on the internet right now but they're not using it to find anything out they're playing games they're talking to their best friend i used to spend plenty of time on the internet chatting with a certain female and not paying any attention to the rest of the freaking world so you know, then the you grow up and you get into a, a life or something and you find these things. <laughs> and uh, communicating with people on the Internet is it's fascinating in some ways. And in other ways, it's disappointing to see just how pitifully stupid I think other people behave. And not because of anything more than how I interpret what they write on a freaking computer screen. <laughs> so, you got to remember, if I'm doing that to you, you're doing it to me back. <laughs> you get what you put out. That was the point of the the mirror. You know, if you ever want to know what you are, <laughs> go look in a mirror. It'll show you. It's how you interpret what you see that matters, not what I see. It's what you see, right? So here, we, it's, I'm sorry to laugh about all this, but here we are bumping into each other and colliding constantly in these mental battles of wit and witticism about, I went to the Snooduversity of Yale, my friend, my education tops yours by four or five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> And then you find out that it's not a matter of education. It's a matter of how much money you spent to buy a piece of paper. <laughs> what difference does it make if you ever do the job? It took you four freaking years or eight years to learn how to do it. You must be pretty bad at it. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. And the people that have all these prestigious jobs that took them eight years to learn how to do something. 
Strikes me they're all the ones fucking everything up with their medicine and their law. Hmm. I sense a pattern is showing itself. <clears throat> now, that pattern may be clear to people like, well, we lost Cowboy. Maybe he got, uh, he's rebooting or something, or maybe he left. He usually says, see you later. So, who knows? Anyway, oh, be back later. <laughs> I should learn how to read from the bottom up, but I can't. It's very confusing. Anyway. Oh, here we are in 20% off, and I don't have anything to sell anybody, but the opposite of what they believe is real is real. And that doesn't identify it either. It just means that whatever you believe is true, it's not. It might have been for 10 minutes, or part of it might have been once upon a time, but right now, today... In this ball of shit we live in with all this <laughs> regulation for our safety and our health. These are the things that are just stomping us. Look what Monsanto did. Now they're hiding out in Germany. <laughs> Bear. <laughs> oh, crying out loud. They even got a 10-year extension on some licensing to do that uh, glyphosate shit here in, in Europe. I mean, if it's not obvious to people that politics, at just about any fucking level that you can look at, has turned into nothing but criminals and lying and stealing, and we get a little crumb, you know, oh, they pat you in the head for being a good citizen, they give you a driver's license, so when they pull you over, they write the ticket to the right person. <laughs> Hell, you'd hate to have them bust in your house because you had a ticket you didn't know you had and you know they were serving the warrant to for not showing up in court shit like that happens they call them <laughs> clerical error wow so at any given time on any given day any one of us anywhere could be fall victim to this superior force you know, the people that got our backs, the ones that are poisoning the food, the water, holding back on the hemp so that people don't ever understand how easily, well, maybe not easily, maybe six months. I think in six months' time, if they were willing to sacrifice a little bit, in the long run, they'd gain a lot. But people don't know how to do anything in increments everything's got to be instant see that's the last 20 years was for if you can't do it immediately it can't be done properly you'll see science is everything technology well to a point and then there's this other thing called nature and the reason i'm hooked on nature it seems to me those old adages like you are what you eat, that wasn't about them calling you a pussy and all that shit. No, 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 son. The food and the chemicals that you ingest create the person you are. Wow, what a thing to think about. And then your body is designed to do all these functions on a level that's not even, you're not even aware of it. I don't know what to call that. Uh, some kind of an automatic system. Some kind or another. But like I said a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of shows ago, when I read about the cells having a, a sense of intelligence per cell, each individual cell, you know, it made sense to me because, well, how else would it know where to go? I mean... When you think about it, when you touch something in the dark, you feel it to identify what it is. And sometimes you're right. <laughs> that that was a sex joke, honey. Yeah. But, you know, never mind. Sometimes, well, it's a shot in the dark. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Mm. Hey, you try doing this 20% off thing sometime. Tell me how simple it is. Especially when you can't get your shit together and be on time <laughs> for the show. That was kind of funny. I thought, uh, uh, 
70 p.m. is really, really late. I don't know what 70 p.m. is about. I've been reading the RLM chat out loud while I'm doing the show. I'm having a Vinny moment. I guess I just miss my partner, Vincent. <laughs> Me and Vinny like to argue on the show about stuff. But it's not really arguing. It's more debating. And it, it turned into that, and then it turned out of that. Now we're back to debating, and now he doesn't he doesn't want to be on the radio for a bit. <laughs> Fucker. But, you know, that's how life is. That's what I mean. You, you, people promise you stuff, or they don't promise you stuff, but you do things, and then you expect them to be there. And this shit happens, and they go, well, I got something else to do. Oh, and then you go, okay, Jim Morrison. <laughs> you know, who the hell you think you are, Neil Young or something? You started this thing, can't you finish it? And I come from the school of people like Neil Young that decided to change, uh, change horses in the middle of the stream. Why not? It might be dangerous, and it might be out of the ordinary, but it just goes to show you that people do it. And trying to stop somebody from being uh, whatever they are. That's a pain in the balls to figure out where that line starts and where it ends. In it? In it? You know, I mean, the way I tease the professor. Ooh, my God. If that was me, I'd be, personally, I'd be insulted by the shit I say to him. But doesn't, fr doesn't stop him, slow him down. I don't even know if he reads any of it. But it gives me ideas, you know. It brings me back to how badly the system actually works. And we, in a way, it's kind of sad to say, but we're lucky to have somebody that represents that side to prove that what we're doing is showing some sign of progress. Okay, Because at the very worst, we're not like that. <laughs> Whatever that is to you, because we all know what I mean, I would hope i'm just trying not to dwell on any i'm more on the personality because there's no person here we're just seeing words on a screen and <laughs> oh, good lord if your self-esteem doesn't go up 800 percent after reading some of that stuff you might need therapy or maybe some psychotropic medication <laughs> a trip to lords a visit from the holy one something that's really special but i think that um did they call it um uh, what do they call that it's, uh, diversity i have fucked around with the word so much i forgot how to say it diversity you know diversity because i always screw around with the stuff but i don't think I don't think it's real, this diversity crap. Uh, me and Cirque are worlds apart as far as, you know, like culture and language and understanding and all this stuff. 50 million things that could really get in the way of something. So I think what it boils down to has got nothing to do with understanding the other partner or the other person that you're talking to. That's nice, but, you know, even sometimes when we are communicating with each other on the internet for example we're, we're not always sure what the other guy is saying or what he means we're guessing we're assuming but the way the type goes and you type in a few words few words as you can but you leave out some of the most important words because english is like that it's so tricky that sometimes you leave out words that would make the sentence more clear but internet or is that the dumb and down of America or the world or whatever we're on, you know? Do you think people in the system really have enough power to control the thinking of the masses? Sadly, I do. Because uh, I hear or see on the internet, 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 over and over, or internet. Because that's it. That's my source of information. I had news news was i thought news was entertainment it said in the corner on fox news when i remember it first coming out uh this is an entertainment program i went, oh okay entertain had nothing entertaining about that but i read the box and it stuck and then over the years 
it vanished. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, memories. Oh, you must have been high on drugs that day because it never said that. Mm. So, you know, one more time. Just like the fluoride, we're in every area of life that we've got. we got some negative shit bullshitting us about something. And then doesn't give you a lot of time to pay attention to the shit in life that doesn't. <laughs> or, or to have the time to look for it. I mean, I've spent a, a lot more time identifying what went wrong than I did identifying how to fix it. But I think over now I'm balancing it out some. I don't spend as much time on the negative as I once did. It's not important. doesn't affect me. But that's the purpose of it. It's nice for me to be uh, knowledgeable about, oh, the United States is trying to pull their oil shit on Venezuela. Oh, the Koch brothers have an oil deal going bad down there, so they're going to change shit because... The guy in power doesn't want to give them their way. But the guy they want to put in power, well, he's another guy. <laughs> He'll do what he wants, you know. Those brothers got this other guy. They're rubbing his balls already. He ain't even holding the power strings yet. <laughs> it's, it's a game. That Oh, wow. Over and over I say this. Probably so boring to hear it. But there, to take any of this to a level of reality... Well, I, you got oil running, you're this and you're that. Well, that's because we're forced to. We're, we're not given a choice. Tell me what the other options are, and I will take them. I would take the shittiest choice you might think there is and still come out better than oil. <laughs> but I did read that people believe, this is how ignorant they are, if there was a, a, a stoppage, we stopped using petroleum for fuel, that we would be using trees. Okay, well, they obviously don't know what hemp is. They think cannabis that gets you high is hemp. And for years and years, they've made it legal to reinforce this fantasy about cannabis to keep a, a lid on hemp and people have been saying lately on the internet well they're pushing for it now all right well like i said the first company i saw pushing for it was levi strauss and they started out using it they were the ones that replaced it with this shitty um, cotton in the first place so what the same people that own it then own it now. It hasn't changed. So who's benefiting from what and why? And just because they start making clothes out of hemp, you, that's not going to convince uh, 80 years of hemp is evil people. There's plenty of them. Me and Moose had a disagreement about this one time. Uh, I think people have been irreparably scarred in their head uh, with the fear mongering done over cannabis and hemp for the 80 years that they did it and that the last 20 didn't even scratch the damage that they've done making it a problem and they're not even willing to tell the truth look we lied because we wanted to sell you the second rate shit no they're making up more crap so that they can make more pretend money it's, it's all about control. I mean, geez, how obvious does it need to be to understand it? But then I guess if you're looking at it and living in it 40-hour uh, a week and all this average Joe kind of stuff, and you don't have time, that you'd have to believe something. You don't just run around all happenstance in the world without any kind of guidance so whatsoever. So you got to think about where do these people's guidance come from that they're so lame and lazy they're willing to believe the government that never does a fucking thing for anybody but the government is good for them. It makes absolutely no sense to this man. Let me tell you here, folks, on 20% off. Anyway, 
State bill to create state-run pet shops appears dead. Okay, Grimner. A dead bill. Here, let me take a sip to that. I'll be back in one second. I'm going to take a guzzle here. Ah. Yeah, my wife makes a nice hot cup of coffee. And that's, well, when uh, people are nice to you. You got to wonder about it. You know, wait a minute. You're being nice. I wonder what you want. <laughs> Right, honey? Uh, see, I got a yes, dear. That's like getting a hallelujah at church. Which means, in plain and simple English, I'm not paying any attention to you right now. I'm busy on my game. Now, five years of marriage, a man's got to learn. You got to know your limitations. And I think if you, the way you do that is if you accept your limitations, well, then... You, there they are. You've got some. And if you don't, how do you possibly explain that to another person? Because <laughs> other people are dying to lock up and accuse and imprison and fine and punish and just beat the shit out of everybody else. Because they don't want to follow the rules and behave themselves. Not, oh, <laughs> did I read Pet? <laughs> oh, that was a good fuck up. Thanks, Grip. It was Pot Shops, not Pet Shops. <laughs> this is too fun. I must, I must be needing to stoke my little bowl here. I'm reading things all loopy like a 15-year-old. Have Van Meter, the Pot Shop Boys. Yeah. Ah. I made a blooper, but hey... Sometimes the best bloopers are still in the typos. My hat's still off to you-know-who works and his meat hod, <laughs> which was a typo for method, but it was as funny as hell. <laughs> and they all suck. Except for, well, no, he probably sucks too. wonder why. You know, that guy, in the uh, the orange-haired guy, the big, you know, the one with the pouty mouth and the faggy hands that he's, <laughs> he's huge. He's, he knows everything about everything. He's got the best this, the best that, the best, the best, the best. <laughs> he's so pompous and sickening that the only people he could possibly attract are pompous and sickening <laughs> otherwise what's the attraction I mean, he's he's like decency repellent in a suit i mean if there was ever a poster child for don't let this happen to you <laughs> it's donald fucking trump and this he is the president of the states i mean sorry guys but wow and you know you got pence and pelosi trying to figure out how to kill him in his sleep so they could take his job and and be the ultimate power holder <laughs> now for somebody like me you know an, an invisible member of society that doesn't even go by his legal law abiding given name I don't care if everybody fucking knows who I am that's total insanity talk about being full of yourself. <laughs> you, you want to stand on boarding things to get in planes and wave. Who are you waving to in the first place? I saw, what's his name do it one time? Bush, or it was either Bush or Obama. The first time I really noticed how absolutely ridiculous. They look like trained, like, <laughs> I guess, I don't know what to compare them to without insulting everybody. <laughs> They don't look as though they're being their self. They look as though they're doing what they're told to do by somebody else to get a result. And we're told this, too. Their speeches are written for them. They don't even write their own freaking speeches. Now, at least they lie to us about, what's his name, uh, Lincoln. 
They lied real big, the Gettysburg Address. I think Lincoln read a side note or a paragraph or something. It was a, a proclamation, you know, where you speak up about something. It wasn't the Gettysburg Address. He didn't do that. Historians said that to pump him up. To hide what he really did so that people will never freaking know. And most of them ain't got a clue. Oh, Lincoln freed the slaves. Lincoln's the thing that nailed the damn box shut, if you think about it. I mean, one, one more sip, I'll be wearing it right back, folks. You know, that's like a science. you got to get that temperature of that coffee just right to guzzle it like a slob. <laughs> and that's how I drink coffee. I've always drank it that way. Like some people drink a beer, I drink a cup of coffee. It gets a certain temperature and I go... <sharp inhale> Don't know why I felt the necessity to explain that, but it's probably because of all the pauses over my elixir tonight. And uh, <laughs> besides that, it's 20% off time, and it's my show. I can talk about any damn thing I want. What do I want to talk about tonight? Hmm. Oh, Trump's veto tweet out already, says Miss Kate. Whoa. Well, I'm not sure what that means, but it, I'm sure that we'll get more people commenting on it as the evening produces out in out in out in out wow let's see what have i got here hey i'm coming up on an hour i started the show late about 45 minutes by some i don't know the trickery of all this clock magic and time changing and time travel and you're in this zone and i'm in that zone and what ended up happening is Cirque made me some sandwiches I wanted. And I said, well, I'll get to the show as soon as I'm done enjoying my sandwiches. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, on a Thursday night and I'm going to do radio, I want something simple. don't want my poor wife in there slaving over a big old fancy meal. <laughs> but I still wanted to eat it at my own pace like a lazy old man. Make everybody wait until I want to get off my ass and do my crazy program. Now, I've been complaining a lot about the fluoride and the water and the food and uh, the oil. The lack of understanding from the public about the truth and the reality of what's going on compared to what they're told. How can you ever do that? You can't compete with the people that own all the information sources. They're going to always beat you because they uh, they got a captive audience, man. There's people out there that swear that they're getting the truth. And, <laughs> oh, wow. And well, well, for those of us that know better, <laughs> the joke's on them. But, you know, that's the sad part of this is that, no, the joke's on everybody because the majority refuses to let go of their damn purse strings and take a really good look at what's in the bag. They're they're holding that five year old holding that cookie. Give me the cookie, Johnny. Crush. You know, and then they crush it and it's all mushy in their hand and they're crying. And you give up and you let them have their fucking cookie and it's it's unedible, but you know what? The voter and the child have in common, they eat it anyway. And who do they complain at when uh, things don't go the way they want to? Or even better, when politicians do all this public hoopla with this uh, speeches and tweeters and twatters and Facebook and whatever fucking else these monkeys do, why, does, why doesn't anybody ever question anything and get anywhere with disagreeing with them? Why do you get ignored or... Um, what what do they call that? Shadowed something like that. Shadow band or I think if you resist, uh, there's got to people be people that resist. But where is their voice? Why are they silent? And it's forever. It started at Kent State. You know, before Kent State, people said, "Hey, let's get these kids back from Vietnam. Fuck this war." And when that started to pick up, 
that's when Nixon was, uh, he was the POTUS at the time, and they had a protest at Kent State. They opened fire on unarmed protesters and randomly killed four. Boom. Now, the the thing that came from that was people stopped protesting. I mean, eh, they, you got a license and ask permission and then go through these channels now. But back in those days, we didn't have all this technology. Things were different. And if you didn't control that crowd that was moving in that direction at the time, it was moving in and do what they did, the industrial military complex wouldn't even exist, not at the level it exists now. This is what they took from us, starting with uh, probably Johnson. Kennedy was making that face of trying to give us something back, and they killed him. And Johnson took over and put us on this road that we're on now, because this is where we are. You know, and, and blaming people isn't what I'm doing. I'm more identifying the time that it happened, because Johnson was no more of a genius than. Uh, Donald Trump or Obama or Clinton or George fucking Washington. These guys were puppets for a bigger game, and we're lied to about the results. And you know that because your dollar's worth, what, three, four cents on the dollar right now? <laughs> the rest of it's gone in interest rates for printing it. This has gotten so damn out of hand. They're getting twenty-one trillion dollar deficit. We're in, we're in debt, and then they say to who? The Federal Reserve Bank. Well, that's good. We only owe it to ourselves. It's not like we owe it to anybody else. <laughs> wow. I wonder how many people really believe that. Because I could open it up right now and find a link that for 20 minutes of reading tells you how wonderful and how necessary the Federal Reserve Bank is to the United States economy. And the reality of it is it's the reason the economy is a fucking flop. I mean, let, us, let alone the second-rate shit that they buy and sell, the fact that the money has nothing backing it up besides, well, we'll pay you. <laughs> That's the Jewish way, you know. Take my word. Don't, don't, no, 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 don't read the fine print. It's the standard stuff there. You, you be bored. Don't, don't worry about it. Huh? We took care of everything. Who spelled Twitter wrong? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, anti. <laughs> Grimner and anti and Others are checking into the Donald Trump tweet of the day. The president is tweeting, people. You must obey. Are you wearing your dark glasses so you don't so you can see the you must obey signs? <laughs> are they clear to you yet? What is it gonna take for crying out loud? Donald Trump Well, I thought they made the point with George Bush, you know, when Old George was, he was, I didn't really see much of, much more than what, you know, people were talking about at the bars, you know, <laughs> and I, it's just, George was a funny guy, <sighs> and then we got Obubu, and I thought Obubu was kind of swishy and weak, but apparently that son of a bitch has a, he has an impressive kill list, I think. Old Obubu would rival old Hill Dog. I bet Obubu and a Hill Dog are like real good friends. And you know, because <laughs> they they do things together. You know, they find other people in charge of places far away that are doing bad things, like trying to get off the petrodollar, and they punish the shit out of them. They bomb their countries into rubble, and then they charge them to rebuild it again <laughs> on, on credit. So they get that nice central bank loan interest rate started, you know, in a little bit more. And they don't even use Vaseline. They just go, 
here you go. Get get your money. We want it all. We're going to get everything. And here we are all playing along with it, doing it like like a, like there's an opt out, you know. Where are you going to go? I mean, guess poor Goober wants to go to the outer space, but you know, who is he going to complain to in outer space when he gets there and he's like, realizes there's no Wi-Fi to, to hook him up to Real Liberty Media? And he's out there in his spaceship going, hey, hey guys, guys, where are you guys? <laughs> but he doesn't seem to think that far ahead. He just thinks of escaping. I don't think of escaping anything. I think of, what do you, what would you call what I do? Hmm. Time to go see something new. It's not about the place you're at. It's about who you are there. <laughs> and the place you're at has a lot to do with how you behave, too, I think. Uh, look at how moody and emotional we are on the freaking Internet over type words. So when you think about in physical reality with your partner, you might have, a, I don't know, maybe you got a little headache coming on. Or some stupid thing you know, you bumped your foot into a table that and you hurt your toe stupid little things like that change you you seem different to somebody that's close to you and they might say hey what gives with you you're acting strange tonight <laughs> and the first thing we do as people is start getting defensive and there's hardly any way around all this arguing and bickering and it's a lot of fun so let's not discount that part. We're going to uh, give arguing and bickering 100%. We're not taking 20% off. That needs to be removed, but unfortunately it's a part of us. Well, many of us anyway. A lot of us entertain it. Oh. And then there's a few people on the you know internet sites that are always nice and friendly and they don't insult anyone, blah, 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 blah. Well, hmm, what makes one person right one way? And then how many ways is there to read the same thing? So, I've been given this a whole lot of thought since the <coughs> incident of 2019. And, you know, because, uh, not because I want to change anything. For fuck's sake, that's the Vinny boy. Me, I just want to understand what's going on, you know, in the electronic world I play in. So that I, too, don't end up doing to them what I thought they did to me. So I got to identify shit, you know, my own mind, not take your word for it. No, 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 no. We don't play that at Flashco. At Flashco, if we didn't see it with our own four eyes, we were probably high or we were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> ah, anti is saying we don't need no stinking Congress critters to fur up this bus. We don't smoke marijuana in the White House. Well, that would be an improvement if they did. Good Lord. I And all that bullshit about Obama being a pothead, that was a load of shit. No, 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 no. A pothead is somebody that smokes when there's pot around which should be every frickin' day if you're a pothead. Now, if you're an opportunist that's looking to make things look a certain way to achieve a certain goal, and being photographed with a marijuana cigarette and your big fat ruby lips might make you look good someday, think about it. These people think these things in 20-year blocks. We're playing with creative madness that you can't even imagine you look around you can't decipher what you see using the information that you have because half of it's nonsense nonsense and lies this is why i go crazy over this round globe flat earth crap you know if that is all you can put your concern on that takes your mind off food and water things that are necessary to understand so you're going to understand this other stuff that you can't... There, all the input you put into that isn't going to change anything. You're never going to change anybody's opinion. 
all you're going to do is distract yourself from something important. That's my opinion. And it makes for a really good argument when you think about it. <laughs> oh, she's chewing her bone on the wood floor. My dog is a dog, baby. I, she don't mess around. Anyway. But she makes these little noises sometimes, and I hear them over my headphones and get curious, because you know how mischievous dogs can be. The I, I, I. Anyway, where was I? I was ranting in a raven. <laughs> Grimner says Goober is already in outer space. No, he's not. No, sadly, no. I think he's trying to hold on to being in inner space, but... He kind of pushed himself out of it. You know, remember An... What was his name? Antrax. Same kind of thing to me. Not Maybe not the violence uh, and the, the horrid insult, but just putting yourself in that separation, you know, oh, I'm all by myself in this world. No, you're not. There's seven billion of us, you know. Nobody's alone unless they want to be. And the way I read his words is like, ah, he turns he, he turns us away and then blames us for leaving when we leave. So, mm. uh, same as uh, the person that got, you know, the big boot in the butt. I think I'm guilty of doing that, my fair share of that over time, but not to everybody. Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't really know how to interpret all this in a way for everybody to see and be all pleased and happy with that's politics see that's when the lying starts is when people have to sell you something to make money to progress to gain something then you gotta wonder wow they're doing all this for me wonder why <laughs> wonder why they're so willing to Put this fluoride in the water for my benefit. Hmm. Let us ponder. Then, of course, you got what you have is two stories. And I guess this is the point of the 20% off tonight. Is more the, you have the truth, and then you have the lie. Well, how do you discern which is which? And it seems to involve other people's approval. If you're alone in your belief, and believe me, I am very alone in some of my beliefs, and I'm married, but I'm still alone in some of these ideas. I don't drag my wife, make her believe what I believe. That <laughs> I think that's what what the success thing is, is you let the other people believe whatever they want. But I think what matters is how you how you accept what you read or hear you know it's it's not easy to define we've been trying to do this me and Vinny were trying to explain it and he's going more to the what's good for everybody based on written law and I take it a little further and I say wow what about the truth you know and then when you do that though some of the truth is so fucked up and horrible that you don't want to hear the truth. You really, the truth would shock and rattle you so badly that you'll settle for the story. At least the story ends with a sunset and a nice guy in a real expensive suit in front of a microphone reading a script, telling you how wonderful everything is. And Sir, she explained that. I didn't understand that at all. She says, those people have hope. Hope, and uh, I don't see no reason to have, I don't, well, she says hope is dangerous. I think it's useless. What's going to happen? That's a matter of your actions that you take. Now, if something outside of what you do interferes with it, like you have a car accident. Your job is you're driving to go to get your groceries and some other idiot decides to overlook the stop sign and plows into your car. Well, who's at fault? You for picking that time of going when that idiot was out on the road or his for hitting you without looking for a stop sign? Because everybody's going to say something. you know. 
And to the guy that hit you, he might, in his mind, think that he didn't do anything wrong. It was, oh, no, no, no. This was not my fault. That, And we always fall back to who's to blame. And what I think the who's to blame game does for us distracts us from ever looking for what's wrong with the game. Fuck the players. You can change players in this game we're in all day and all night, every day and every night, for 200 years, and we're still going to be right where we are now, no matter what. The words and the explanations might be different, but the end results, we're going to end up where they are now, because the people that we have allowed to be in control of seats of decision Uh, high-ranking members of religious organizations. These people should be ignored. Just fucking turn your back on them. But that's not the popular... um, What would you call it? (laughs) That's not the uh, social convention that we are raised to abide by. You know, because some part of that state shit you know they beat these ideas into you so that when you hear bad things about oh the church the state the government uh, education your immediate instinct is going to protect that entity from insult that's what they've tried to raise me to do i recognize that i see that in other people and then i read internet stuff like um there's some kind of scandal going on and admissions and this kind of, this school's making more money than they know how to they can't even spend the profits they've got and they're putting people in debt for six figures to get an education if you knew that i don't know how many people are, have even bothered to look at how many universities in the united states that are charging big big fistfuls of money for an education behind all that they have more wealth than they can spend. They're a profit-driven business. It's not an education system. It's disguised as an education system. And the proof is, look at what are they going to, what are you going to go to college to learn how to do if all the businesses are all leaving for other countries? Oh, wait, you're going to have to go to the other country to work? What, are you going to work on the internet? Maybe people would just do a wire wire business, you know, instead of all that traveling and burning gas and burning fuel, and I would just do it over the internet. Hey, wonder why they don't do more of that now. Hmm, let us ponder. Well, would that make you a prisoner in your own castle if you worked out of your own home? <laughs> Damn. How do you explain any of this shit? And as we all know, we all got our own way of looking at it. And we're probably all wrong, too. Because what is happening, whatever this is, it's bad. It's very, very, very bad. Ooh. The only thing in the future that I can see people looking forward to right now are sex bots and trips to fucking Mars. I don't see any new... Uh, well, look, we just figured out how to move things... With mental telepathy, we don't need trucks anymore. We'll mentally telepathy it across the world. Nah, they're going to sell you a fucking seat on a spaceship to go see Mars in 10 years. (laughs) Or whatever the hell this new... They got another clown, this NASA bullshit, working with this other idiot. And it sells, and there's enough information out there to make you believe the technology's real. But what there isn't... Is any fucking proof that any of this ever happens? And the proof they always show us turns out to be these cheap, gimmicky, freaking uh, videos of stupidity. And I saw a beauty today. Supposed to be at the space station. And they're looking at these three people. And they look like they're floating. And they're, you know, hovering in the in the room. And then you see this thing fall, and this arm reaches out to stand it back up again. But, <laughs> wow. that If that doesn't show you something's wrong, 
Plus, there's somebody operating the camera on top of the whole damn thing. But this is this is our United States military working with the United States government to deceive the United States freaking population and make them believe things that aren't real to keep them doing stupid shit that nobody wants them to do. Like building bombs. <laughs> Boeing. Okay. There's a big hoopla in Canada. Uh, Frumpy can correct me if I'm wrong here. But there's a big hoopla with Boeing because they have these new planes and two of them fell out of the sky and murdered a whole bunch of innocent people. And apparently Boeing says, well, this is a little bit too early to get your knickers in a twist over a couple of planes. Not working. <laughs> Playing it down. <laughs> because the lawsuits will take, what, five, ten years before they hit. And by that time, the people that are invested in all this shit will be gone. And the people that will own it later won't be liable. <laughs> it's a be Wow. They pass it around. This is that gram of Coke at the party, you know. And it's not that big a bag, people. You better get a, get your fingers in that before it's all gone. And the government treats this like a like a trough. There, there's plenty for all you politicians. Just grab some and run. Don't look back. You might get caught. Let's see. Flash somebody. Use Gramming's example and call it educraption instead of education. More accurate. Well, I've been a worthy adversary of formal education since I was a child. And it never got me any fucking where then. It's not got me any fucking where since. I don't foresee it getting me any fucking where in the future. But it is very refreshing to see other people share that frame of mind. Education. It would be one thing if what you went to school was useful shit you could put to work, but it's not. It's garbage. And the crap you come out of school thinking is real. Government and military? Please. And I know, but they exist. Blah, 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 blah. No, they exist, but not in the way that we're told they exist. And if you're any part of it in your life and you ever bother to... See, to look around you with open eyes, you'd know there's something seriously freaking separate from the military to the population. Those are two different worlds. Those people don't even recognize we're here. You know, that's how they become cops and do the horrible shit cops do when they decide military isn't for them. Ugh, I had a buddy. He was a friend, sort of. Well, he was married to a friend. And we were friendly enough. We didn't ever bother each other. But his lifestyle just rocked me. And uh, he was, he was, uh, he came back from, I guess, what was it, Iraq. And decided he didn't want to do military anymore. So he decided to go to work as a prison guard. And, and just about, wow. It was really difficult to sit with him and listen to him talk about the people he was in control of, the way he talked about them, like they weren't even people. You know, and he was on to their games. And Wait a minute. You're here with me where I live and the way I live, and you're talking all this shit. So, you know, the, the relationship didn't last long. Me and... Me and Josh parted ways. Uh, I started to find other things to do when he was going to be around. And there you go. Different, you know, different strokes for different folks. But what bothered me about it was how could you possibly do this to other people for money? Because there was plenty of ways to make money. If, you, if that was your goal in life, to make money, why would you want to spend your time in a prison bullying people around that broke the law. You know, that kind of crap. When he himself, in his own respect, did the same shit that the people in the jail did. Because, I mean, hell, I've been smoking weed for a long time, and he knew me. So, think about that. If you came to my house, you weren't welcome there. If you were an anti-weed head, what the fuck would I hang around with you for? 
but because he was a smoker and then he took that job that job killed my friendship huge and hmm, it's kind of an unfair way to be but I'm like that about a lot of things so I got into an argument with Sock Puppet once about uh, a certain band members um, associations with American political figures it rocked me so bad that I don't even want to hear the guy's music because he's such a fucked up human being making a fortune off the misery of other people and lying about it to the public and I can't support somebody like that that financially that's what liking their music is you're open it on YouTube I don't care if, if the band is not getting royalties off this shit they did they still get somebody's making money off of it somehow some way that's what everything exists for so that some other putts can make money off of somebody else's work so because I am how I am blah 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 well other people can overlook people's personal behavior and see their art I'm not that fortunate you know I think if you're willing to stomp on other people to make millions the attention you get I hope it's crap <laughs> like uh, South Park gave them you know you if you're gonna draw that kinda hand you should get it that's what why Hillary's where she's at all all these years all that crime behind her and she's what 75,000 years old and everybody stopped talking about imprisoning her they gave up on that <laughs> hey Beetle just realized I'm yakking through my butthole on the radio podcast yeah I don't know I've just got kind of yakky about all kinds of weird topics tonight but I think that you know integrity as far as being in business, should be a cornerstone of it. If if you're going to sell a product and the way you earned your money to make that product profitable or available or whatever you call that, and if that's backed by a bunch of scum that's living off the misery of everybody else, well, I don't want to. I don't want to participate. Okay. Well, different strokes for different folks, but it just goes to show how. People don't care about some of the more important things in life are overshadowed by superficial crap like art. And I'm an artist, so, hmm. And I've had a lot of people say, well, that's wonderful, I am, whoopee-dippee. And I've had a lot of people say, wow, that's really fantastic. How, how did you do that? So, you know, depends on the person looking on to make the call. And some people care more about this than that and the other. And that sets the divide. There you go. Yeah, should be podcasted by now. What does that mean? What was... I don't... I'm trying to read the chat and talk like a dummy again. I don't know why I do that. But Beatles finally figured out I'm on. So now I'm going to tell a joke about Beetle when he was in school. No, I'm not. I was kidding. Uh, I've done Johnny Foulmouth jokes on here. I don't eat, or on the dork table over the years. I don't think I have a good Johnny Foulmouth joke I haven't told. Let me do a little thinking on that. But in the meantime, I'm on a rant about integrity, you know, and I don't know if there's a class that's taught at school so that people can learn that the things that you do, you know, your intentions make a huge impact on the outcome of what you do. Lying about your intentions might get you a ways, you know, and you might get a long way. You might even become worth a hundred million dollars, and that sounds like a great huge, but and it is a great big huge, but it's no more real than how I live. It's the same freaking life without the privacy <laughs> you got secrets and you gotta hide from wackadoodles and everybody wants to be your friend because you got a lot of money you might buy them a car <laughs> can you imagine a life who in their right mind would want to pursue a life that's based on everybody wants to know me because they want something hmm. i wonder how many rich people think that way I wonder how many rich people know deep down inside that if they didn't have all that 
uh, f- that people wouldn't want to be within five feet of them. <laughs> now, don't you tell me that you haven't met somebody like in a bank or a place of whatever business that just they look pretty on the outside, but their greasiness came out their pores, made you feel uncomfortable. Now, I might be wrong with this one. And I've been called a little bit sensitive by other people because I make assumptions based on prior knowledge of other situations and so on. I have this computer in my head that kind of calculates what I'm doing, compares it to what I've done, and says, Stop! This could mean trouble. So I don't do that. And the same goes for something good. Ah, yes, I've done this before. This will be interesting. Uh, I mean, it's the difference between a variation on a sandwich and walking in blindly down the road with your eyes closed without looking where you're going. There's two, you know, two, there's different ways to approach the unknown. There's the known knowns and the known unknowns. The unknown knowns and the unknown unknown knowns and stuff like that, Rummy told me. But all this assuming we know shit, and, well, no, nah, we base that on our, our, my own experiment, not our, because yeah, I, don't, I don't know if everybody else does what I do. But they should. I mean, they seem to live a life, so how you... They call it judgment, and I think without a, some sense of a judgment you couldn't function. I mean, how would you know which way to turn or when to when to walk, when the light was the right color? Uh, what other kind of crap do you need to know? Because <laughs> apparently in social situations, if you aren't don't have your guidelines clearly written out for you in triplicate, you can't find your ass with both hands. Now, I'm trying to prove that to be complete nonsense and bullshit. And only to myself. I brag about it on the radio. Nobody can prove it. I'm sure. But, uh, well, I guess you could if you want to talk to my wife. My wife would tell you the same thing I'd say, I think. I don't I don't think we're that far off. She might th- throw a little bit more, you know, that spangly danglish in there. Because it's more exotic when she does it. I don't have that exotic Danish twang to my American voice. But I can exaggerate my partner, Vinny. <laughs> anyway, where are we at on the... Oh, hey, Motley showed up. Anti and Motley and Beetle are tromping around in the reallibertymedia.com chat. They've known each other for a while. And there's a nice thing to think about, too, is the the electronic friendships we got going on here. Some, you know, some of them are, I don't know, kind of chaotic and crazy. And some of them are different. You know, like, um, hmm, let me see. Who could I use as an example? Well, I think right now what's got my attention the most out of everybody on the reallibertymedia.com chat is actually Miss Moose and her being snowbound. I don't know why. I mean, does there's nothing anybody can do about it except listen. But to be... Put myself in her spot would be impossible. So it's, uh, she's like Vinny to me in, in that when I want to know about what went on at Bundy, I ask Vinny. Vinny will tell me the truth. No matter what I think, he'll tell me the truth. And I think the same thing about Moose. If she says there's six fucking feet of snow outside and it's been there for a month and she don't like it, if you go outside, there it is, six feet of snow. Not four inches, and she doesn't want to shovel it. No, she's telling the freaking truth. And there's a lot of people on the RLM that I hold in that regard, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, I'm real big on telling the truth about stuff. You know, if you want to lie and fuck around, there's a way to type it so we know you're lying and fucking around. It's not to be taken serious. But if you're lying and fuck around and you're actually you're putting out more shit and more crap, what's the point? I mean, where is this supposed to go? I don't know, but I do think I understand it's a necessary part of the balance to keep us 
you know, so we can see the whole game all at the same time and at some point. Because if you're, you know, if you're too happy, then you get a little lazy and you forget that, well, things can go wrong. And I probably give up that that kind of impression about being too happy, but nah, I'm I'm pretty grumpy for the most part, but I try not to wear my grumpy suit to the radio. If I did the radio in the fucking morning, you people wouldn't listen. Be like, what? What in the what? again? Uh, stop! I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm trying to wake up my eyes. Give me my eyes. <laughs> but you know, so I I found um, doing it at the end of the day is uh, more comfortable. I've had something, you know, my day's gone and I've done this and that. Oh, I've been attacking a few puzzles, but they're not the good ones that I like, so they're not as interesting. I'm between puzzles. I'm like a junkie now. I'm between puzzles. My my next project is going to be epic. And if I, as I progress, if I should make it that far, I'm working my way up. I'm doing a bigger puzzle every time to see if I can finish that one to give me the confidence to go into the next size and eventually end up with shit to put on all the walls upstairs in the bedrooms. But, well, we got this far with it. So, anyway, that's for the dork table topic. I wear my hat tonight. I guess I was really bitchy about the fluoride and, and integrity, you know. Uh, keeping your word doesn't mean what it once meant. It's different now. Things are changed. People are easily satisfied with uh, glitz and glamour and features and benefits and project development and profits and big houses and cars and boats and crap like that. I'm far too lazy for all that maintenance. Oh my God. Who could be bothered? You know, I'm maybe I'm just too old. I hit that time in life where, no, I want to lay down and go to bed. <laughs> Don't want to go out to the bar. What are you, nuts? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I, I had a laugh cough going on. <laughs> anyway. Let's see what's going on. Oh, yeah, Beetle and Well Dan and Ty. Well, there's some chatty fuckers on the Real Liberty Media tonight. Well, I'm doing my 20% off. And I let's see, what have I got? Half an hour to make a full show tonight. I'm going to think I'm trying to make a full show. And never, in the never, ever, ever, till the next time, come on 45 minutes late or I would be done 15 minutes ago but i fucked up i don't know why i can't do the clock i disavow this clock i tell my wife i disavow your clock eh. and the next thing i know i i gotta go pick her up at a certain time on the clock because she's coming in on the train and i take the dog out there you know because we've uh <clears throat> over the time we've managed to find particulars this partner likes to do that more than this partner so this partner does this so that that partner can do that is that called balance or compromise i often wonder about that you know what exactly is a compromise is i think maybe a compromise is when you listen to the other guy girl whatever thing binary Club-footed lesbian with a lisp, you know, homo with a bag of pickles, whatever you may be speaking to out there in the real world, may have a different opinion than you. Hmm. What do you do when people have a different opinion than you have? Well, I think what my wife learned to do is just roll her eyes and ignore it because there's no change in my mind. And my mind isn't made up about a particular I'm made up my mind that whatever's popular is bullshit so how do you fight with that oh yeah this morning somebody was uh, I think me and me and Moose when we first, she was uh, 
getting ready to call it a night when I come on in the morning because we're that far apart in the time zones. And uh, we were chitter-chattering about what the hell were we chitter-chattering about? What weren't we chitter-chattering about? But it was a peaceful, quiet morning. And usually when she's really stressed, she posts a lot of music and doesn't spend any time talking. And this morning, she seemed like maybe she's getting a little relief from this freaking weather and things are working out a little bit better for her. And I'm really looking forward to that because I'd like to hear, you know, like this weekend, she, um, Grimm's doing the show by himself on Freaker's Ball because she's escaping from Snowland for something and getting the hell out for a few days. So hopefully that will help her because, you know, that's what people need to do is try to encourage other people to do the weird shit that they feel will make them feel better. Because when you want to do something and, and the people in your circle are telling you you're nuts, what do you think you're going to think when you do what they told you that they thought was nuts? It's all going to stay in the back of your mind. So... You know, people need to be encouraged, and some, some, not all of us, some people don't give a flying fuck what you think about nothing, like Vinny, at certain levels. And then some people are very sensitive about what you think about a lot of crap, like me, and I iggy you, because I don't want to waste my time arguing about stupid shit that doesn't fucking matter. Opinions are nothing more than something to occupy time it's it's wonderful to be right but it's different when you harp on oh i know this and oh i know that the harp and i do on what i know is that everything i have ever been taught by this existing government education religion crap that i saw through my life you guys ain't going to believe this but it's like every damn thing turned out to be the exact opposite of what I was told. Right down to how I'm living today, where I'm living, who I'm living with. These things, if if I would have said, I'm going to go do this, I would have been a laughing stock of whatever uh, social situation I was in. If it was a church or a bar, people would have still thought... Oh, you're crazy. You're never going to find that. Now, I don't know how I found what I found, but I think it's because what I started out saying. I was willing to listen, and me and Cirque started out in a in a complete opposites disagreement, and she said, well, okay, if that's what you think, that's cool. Didn't call me a name, didn't do any of that, and that intrigued me, so... When we ran into each other again, it was different ground. And I think that's because, I'm going to take credit for this, because I'm the guy, and guys are usually always right. Oh, man, if you're a man and you're wrong, people love that shit. And I like to be the one out there that willing to push the edge just to see if maybe this time it won't work. <laughs> you know, a th- a third relationship of this caliber in a guy's life could be a you know, risky kind of thing. And in my case, uh, it wasn't. I was afraid of the big bad wolf, you know, because it's the internet. You know, people tell you stories and they make you think things that aren't true. So to run into somebody that was as, like Vinny in a girl suit, you know, if with me, I, Cirque is very honest. I don't feel um, I don't feel that American thing where I don't know you said this but hmm, doesn't look that way and those things in life were common where I'm from and they're not common here I don't know if it's Cirque I don't know if it's her family it could be a, a combination of all kinds of things but to uh To exist in a world that's as fucked up as the one I'm in physically on the outside, you know, the bigger picture thing. And then to live in a place that just makes me feel comfortable at this level, it's it's hard to define. It must sound uh, fairy tale-ish. 
I suppose would I don't know what that I can't find a manly way to define that pie in the sky you know oh yeah, yeah da, da, da. but hmm. I don't know I think if I'm the I'm the kind of person that if I had something to bitch about I would I do and the things that I'm upset with are things out of everybody's control and I'm not trying to get anybody to get into control I just want them to know there's an internet here, and if you look hard enough and you're open to possibilities, everything that you believe, you can find something else to replace it with if you want to. Now, if you already have your mind made up and it's concrete and it's all etched in stone and these things are mine and I ain't changing for anybody, then you're probably not listening to this crap. <laughs> You have to be a special sort of um, individual, I would say, to be interested in a, a far out of the world opinion uh, on the topics I bring up on the, the radio when I do radio. And sometimes uh, I find myself in the uh, in the popular side of a fight. But that's not the goal. I'm not looking for that so much as I am. You know, if you know something's wrong and you're looking for the answer, believe me, the Internet's got the answer to suit anything. It'll give you whatever you want it to give you. So if your mind's made up about finding out that, uh, you know, like fr fractional reserve banking is good for the economy, I'm sure you could find that. I've seen links that praise the Federal Reserve Bank up one side and down the other. Where would we be without them? And all it is is a Ponzi. It's such so massive. It's <laughs> you can't define this crap on a radio show from opinion. I mean, I could find links and all that crap, but even if I posted them, this is you know this is twenty percent off. I thought you you know more more or less people come here to. Get away from the links and the the reality for just a few minutes. <laughs> Hear a bad story or a funny joke or a different uh, a different outlook on something that the common man would find very weird. You know, like getting along with other people as a common instead of combating and fighting everything and everyone. But that's the game. You know, that's how the game's set up. That's why you got rules and regulations and police, and guns, and bombs, and tanks, and weapons of mass destruction. I mean, wow, where did we get to the point where we're so defensive that we build weapons to attack other people with, but they're for defense? What do you... Well, well, I got a lot of learning to do about this war stuff because no matter how many ways they've tried to explain it to me, the only thing I see benefiting from it is this fake economy that we live in. Now, what's it been? 11 years since the last time they crashed this thing, the Federal Reserve. They got to be coming up to something. I seen a link earlier this morning about... Um, the stock market, which has been going up and going up and going up for many, many years, suddenly taking a little look down into the void beneath it. I guess people are starting to insist on be getting paid. And when you live on credit as we do and have for, what, 106 years and counting that we're accountable for, Everything printed since 1913, all this currency, beside the currency, there's an attached debt that never gets printed. And I think that probably, I don't even think the $21 trillion accounts for it, but the system is trying to explain it away. The interest by debt, well, see, you're in debt for these services and these Things that you bought, this military and all these people's salary and all this crap and on and on and on. But they just keep printing more money to pretend that it's all under control. Hmm. Well, 
how long is this reserve going to get away without raising their rates before they collapse? Uh, they got to bring in so much on paper before they can't pull this off to the public anymore. And the like what happened in 2008. Hey, we need a couple of trillion dollars over here, people. Come on, bend over. This won't hurt long. No, we'll take General Motors. Sure. <laughs> what else you got? And as a rule, anything that's touched by government fucking greasy government shitty fingers, uh, it always ends up, well, where it is. And the, uh, the opposition of my uh, side, you know, the anarchist, do no harm, mind your own fucking business, leave me alone crowd... Well, we're faced with all these other people that want profits, riches, many properties, many homes, many cars. I need a fucking Learjet to tell everybody they need to conserve oil. They shouldn't waste fuel. They should live close to their work so that they don't waste anything. And these people that run around preaching this are... <laughs> wasting everything they're living on debt I don't even know if they know it I can't understand how anybody that has a functioning brain can look at this and not see it for what it truly is when there's so many folks on the real liberty media that do and I've chatted with them for you know years now I came up to RLM from another sat that was similar uh, different format, but the same kind of, yeah, I know, they all suck. What are you going to do about it? See, that's where we're at now. What are we going to do about it? And then there's little things that we do do individually in the collective. And one of them that caught on real good was growing your own little bit of vegetables in the backyard of your domicile. And there's a lot of ways to do this, man. When I was in Scotland, I wanted to do aquaponics. And the weather was more suited for that kind of thing than it is here. I could probably get four or five months. I don't know about five. It gets pretty cold here. And there's ways to heat these things and this, that, and the other. But I'm not that damn technical with all this modern technology so i've just figured i'll throw some seeds in the ground and water them pull the weeds pick the fruit and see what happens but you know i'm um i'm interested in things that are out of my reach and as long i think in my mind as long as i'm always available for you know there's more to know than what you know that is a real important thing for me to always keep in the you know the, the front and not forget I don't know everything good lord and I hear people that you know they really well here I read them I one of the links I listen to more informative and you know people just reporting what they saw the way they saw it but very little of this I know better than you you're just a dummy head you don't know anything wow what kind of way is that to treat people and maybe that's i've never thought about that till right now maybe the lack of uh reception i get from new people is that my topics suck because it goes against everything they've ever been told and who in the right mind wants to sit and be called names by somebody that doesn't even hold a red hat with any respect or a flag or a $20 bill for crying out loud. You know, all the icons that I grew up worshipping are nothing to me now. Oh, I, I blow my nose in an American flag made in China. I carry a $20 bill around in a certain billfold just to remind myself of, you know, where I came from and what this crap is really worth because... When you do, like, international exchanges, wow, the dollar takes an ass-whipping. <sighs> Holy smoke. If you want to spend a lot of money, go to Denmark and 
Let's trade your American dollars in for Kroner. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Just goes to show the truth about the country I'm from. And it's gotten, uh, it's gotten worse, too. The UK used to be strong once upon a time. I remember when my grandma came over to the United States of America. I was like six, seven years old. And, uh, at that time in history, the American dollar to the pound was seven dollars to the pound. The pound was huge. You could live good on the English pound. And then things changed. <laughs> so, wow. What what happened in the 60s? See, this is, I've narrowed it down to 1968 where huge changes took place. I've still yet to identify them in post links and all that crap. Uh, I just know this for myself. And it's a starting point for me. Something in that year went so horribly wrong that we wandered down the path we're on now. And I thought it was guided by this crap like the Manson family, you know, the hippies and the the potheads. Because all those people that were doing all that love stuff, they were gaining momentum. And they were uh, a thorn in, in the side of old uh, Nixon. Nixon hated people. Good God, that prick wanted to kill all of us. Sent us to Vietnam, sent us to prison, sent us somewhere. But things got really bad through that, that Nixon administration. And oddly enough, yeah, what year did he take this? Well, he took the seat in 69. But the decision to put him there. Uh, you guys think you're voting. <laughs> no. But the decision to put Nixon in the White House, that came a long, long time ago. And they, the people that did it referred to him as that greasy, slimy lawyer, Tricky Dicky. It's, it's out there for you to find if you look far enough. I found it. And I don't see any reason to copy and paste everything. I only do certain things to irritate Hansel. But the rest of it is just... Uh, now, you guys all know, there's not much to teach the Internet, you know. The Internet is about finding the answer that suits you so that you can feel good about you. And then there's us, and we found the truth that didn't make us feel good about us, and we read it any fucking way. Not only did we read it, we compared it to the story that we were told. Hey, and you know what a lot of people found out? Stuff like Rob Works, and they all suck. I didn't write that. That was Rob Works that wrote that. And Grimner's got a few of his own. I mean, it, this is Rob's more up. He's very creative with his jingles. He robs the bubblers. So he, he gets stoned, and he, he types at us. And gives us something to think about now and again. And there, see, even this, competitive ice violence, everything is backwards. How do you make sense of that? <laughs> Two lines on the internet, I just read them at random, one after the other, but who knows what they meant. Maybe the two guys talking do. <laughs> I don't. I've been yakking my pile. And we're coming up to a complete show here on 20% off. Have no idea what I rambled about tonight besides, oh, I did a little bit of bitching about fluoride. Did a lot of bitching about integrity. Because I see that word meaning something so differently than other people. You know, and your art, I don't give a flying fuck about your art if your art was financed by lies and war. No, thank you. You can keep it. And if more people thought like that, there'd be less war. <laughs> because, actually, this is how this shit works. <sighs> it has to be agreed upon at some level, even among us, or it wouldn't happen. Uh, this is not out of our control. It's out of our concern. And a, lot of, out of, a lot of people don't give a shit one way or the fucking other. They're just glad it's not them. <laughs> I know that. Anyway, what has Rob got to say here at the end of the show? If the truth doesn't piss you off, someone is lying to you. Absolutely, Rob works. Uh, I know, and, and that's such a negative Nelly way to look at all this crap. But 
you know, if you're uncomfortable in your life and you, you think it's everybody else, no, 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 no. First mistake you're making, what you, I would recommend somebody that's blaming the rest of the world for fucking up is to take a look at themselves and see what part they play in it. Because even though the world's fucked up, you can withdraw from it and not participate in it in a lots and lots of ways. And I'll be doing radio for a while, so hopefully I'll come up with this topic again later on, or somebody will remind me, or something will remind me. And we'll carry on in 20% off with our bizarre outlook on the world and its uh, agents and minions. Oh, all the things that people think run it. <laughs> Nothing runs it. It's an illusion, and, uh, well, there's plenty of proof to prove that if you want to see it that way. And if you don't want to see it, there's pr plenty of things to prove that I'm full of shit. So, hmm. and we're going to end 20% off with that sarcastic crack there out of me and give the lineup a shot. Today is Thursday, so tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. On the eastern coast of the United States, Graham Z will fly across the airwaves in her rocket chair podcast. And she does it on Wednesday, too. Then, after that, at 11 p.m. East Coast time in the United States of America, you got balls to the wall. That's right, because Moose is escaping and getting out of her house this week end and then the next morning i come back with the dork table at noon on the east coast of the u.s and uh sunday morning about noon east time grimner starts uh cranking up the old blues music plays the blues music into the trivia game well we had some trivia players last week i enjoyed that just a little bit i had a few more wins than i've been getting lately too so my ego got a little boost and then uh hal anthony comes on at three o'clock on the west coast of the united states with behind the woodshed grabs himself a can of whoop ass and does what he does explains shit to us in a way that we wouldn't know is there unless somebody else brought us to that door to look into it. That's what these other podcasts are for, too. I'm just a little bit more, I don't know, unorthodox about my delivery. Uh, Monday night, 7 o'clock on the east coast of the United States. We got Grim Leftovers, where he does what he does all over everybody and makes a big mess out of it. Let me tell you, he was supposed to be doing old stories and he started out last week doing a new story. <laughs> and I got to admit, it was such a good story. I carried it on the next night on In a Perfect World because Vincent said, hasta la huego, I'm going a huego for a while. -o. And now he's gone. Then uh, we got Tuesday night. I come back solo for In a Perfect World. And then Wednesday, 7 o'clock on the eastern coast of the USA. Graham Z in her rocket chair, all alone by herself, worried. What is she going to do? So somebody better get in there and help her Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Or should be all alone. Anyway, thanks a lot for playing along tonight with my craziness about the things that go through my wacky mind. And I'll see you next time on uh, whatever program I end up doing with whoever I do it with. Oh, if Mary, if you're out there and you hear it or somebody can get to her, tell her to come to the dark table on Saturday so I can tease her about her Eeyore suit. See you later, everybody.